Hey guys, I'm Brad from Brad Builds. This is gonna be a slightly long intro, so if you wanna skip to the building part, jump to this time. This past month, I've been so busy, I haven't had any time to upload or edit any videos. In the time off I had, I slightly rebuilt the WRX engine, which I'll talk about in a sec, but the most important thing that happened is that I got monetized here on YouTube, which is why you might've saw an ad before this video started. This is all thanks to you guys, and I just wanna say thank you for following and watching these videos. Now about this episode. We're gonna get the new radiator support welded in and then we're gonna get the rest of the car put back together. So by the end of this video, we should have a running slash roadworthy car, which is super exciting. One last note before I start, I rebuilt the engine of this car and I was going to make a video about the rebuild, but it ended up not editing together well, so I scrapped the footage. So don't just think I'm throwing the engine back in the car. It has all new gaskets and seals, all the way from the valves to the heads, including new spark plugs, timing belt, pulleys, and a water pump. You get the picture. So not to fret, the engine won't pull a Subaru and blow a head gasket on me tomorrow. It will at least give me a few months. Now enough with the talking, let's get to the building. So I started by moving all of the wires back. So we have a straight shot to the lower radiator support bar. And so that when we're welding today, we don't get splatter all over this. And then I'm gonna cover this all with blankets so we don't get splatter in there. The box for the new radiator support with my name on it. They, uh, they really go all out with this packaging. Oh, and a spider. God damn it. Voila. Voila. So now we'll take this and we're gonna do a really raw and rough test fit just to see exactly what needs to get bashed out and bent back. So the rough fit isn't bad. Um, the worst of it is this bar underneath here that connects the two frames is bent up here and then exactly the same on the other side here. So all this needs to come down and be flat. This is all bent up. It actually looks like it's out far enough. I don't think it needs to be bent out that way. It just needs to go down. And then if we come look over here, kind of get this level with where it's supposed to be, you can see that this bar is, this bar is pushed out this way. So it needs to come and get hammered out that way. This bar over here looks to be pretty straight. And the last thing I noticed is that this whole radiator support, like the whole configuration comes with these lower brackets. And I left those lower brackets on because I didn't know that it came with it. So I think first course of action is bending this down and then we should be able to come down farther because this is like, this is raising this support up. So once this is bashed down, it should give me a better representation of how bad these bars are. So now you can see that where I bashed down on either side is a lot lower than the middle. So now the whole entire middle needs to come down. This is, this whole piece is really flimsy. I don't know if you guys were seeing that when I was hammering it, but when I was hammering here, it was totally fine because it's like three pieces all put together. So it's a lot stronger and it bent down a lot nicer. Here is super flimsy in the middle. And if I'm hitting it with a hammer, the whole thing is just flexing up and down. It's not really going anywhere. So I'm gonna try putting on like a two by four and bashing the two by four down so it kind of evenly distributes the bashing. So down here where it was raised on the sides, it's now flat on this side and it's flat, 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 flat. And then it starts to raise over here. And it's not because this isn't low enough, it's because this upper bar is resting on the impact zone, which means this is not actually straight, this is bent up. So we need to bend this down so that that will give this some slack, and then this support will get down to the frame. Because on this side, the support is down, it's touching, and we're almost touching, but this needs to get bent that way, and we're totally flat down here. So that definitely is the cause.
test fit number 543. I think it's time to bash this impact zone out because everything is getting flatter and more precise. Now this side looks great, but with that side straight, this side still needs to come down a bit because we're lifted here, we're lifted there, and we're making contact here, and the holes are not aligned. So we're gonna try bashing this side down now. So I think we're at our final test fit. All the points are matching up really nicely, and the fit seems to be really good. The only thing that is kind of getting in the way is there's some leftover metal from the old radiator support, but once that gets grinded out, then everything should be super flush. So I think we're done test fitting. We're gonna grind that metal out and then we'll start punching holes in the new radiator support so that we can weld it into the car. So I went ahead and grinded that metal out. I also marked all the spots that need to be hole punched with a Sharpie. And lo and behold, there are 43 places that need to be punched. So I already knew that I needed to make about 40 holes and drilling just wasn't something I wanted to do. So I got this. This is a sheet metal hole punch. And how it works is you lift this lever up and in here is a punch. This goes into the metal and at the bottom, perfect size counterpart. And then when you pull the two levers together, it punches through the sheet metal. And the reason I'm not using a drill is because I didn't want to warp the sheet metal and I knew it would take a lot of time to drill all those tiny holes. So we're just going to do it with a punch and get through it really quickly. Now all the holes are punched. So now we need to clean up the surfaces and get the parts ready for welding. So you guys might be wondering how I'm gonna prevent rusting between the two pieces of sheet metal. And I'm gonna use a galvanizing spray. What I forgot to mention is that this galvanizing spray, it's weld through. So it's not like putting a primer down and then trying to weld through the primer. It's actually, it's a weldable galvanizing uh, primer, I guess. Quick tip to anybody who is welding on a car, make sure your battery is disconnected and that any electrical components that are grounded to the body are removed within 12 inches of where you're welding. If you're welding on a hybrid, check your owner's manual. Okay, back to it. Now we have it all welded and primed. Now we're gonna lay some silver paint down. All right, so the paint dried really nicely. And the welds look decent. I melted the metal in a few spots just because I think that zinc coating kind of interfered with getting a good connection, but everything's nice and strong. So now I think it's time to get the plastic and everything off and start putting the car back together. Everything's assembled and looking good. I changed the transmission oil because it's super easy to access right now. And I think the next thing to do is to get the engine inside the car because I don't want to put the fenders on and then risk damaging them with the crane. The crane is kind of hard to push around with the motor on it. So I'm going to leave all the panels off. We'll get the engine in and then we'll build around it.
The engine is almost fully assembled. There's a few more things in this box that need to go in there and the intercooler, but the intercooler is gonna wait until I can get the clutch bled and I don't have a second person here to do that with me, so we're gonna leave that for now. Something that does need to get fixed is this windshield wiper reservoir. Somehow in the collision, this mounting bracket got yanked hard enough that it broke the plastic right there. And it actually, it does leak. So we need to fix that. And to fix that, we need to clean it first. Now the clutch is bled by help of Hope. So we'll get the intercooler in and then the coolant reservoir. Okay, the engine is finally assembled, like actually assembled besides the serpentine belts and oil. So I think it's time to get some body panels back on. We have the passenger side fender here and the fender mount is in there. So we'll get that mounted up and then we'll see if it fits. And the fender is on and it looks great. These are not scrapes, they're actually just tape residue from the tape that was on there. The, the door jam is no longer touching. If you guys saw on my reveal video, you saw that the old fender was like touching the door, but now there's the proper amount of door jam back. All the lines seem to flow perfectly. And yeah, I'm really excited. The second that got on, there was just like a, a beam of light inside of me. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's almost done. Looking good. The other fender went on good too. The only problem it's having is that down here, this bolt is not aligned. So I'm gonna try and pull this piece out. It did line up here perfectly and everywhere else, just this spot. And this is where a lot of the impact was. So this part is just probably bent. The next thing that we're gonna get in will be the wheel guards on both sides and then probably the headlights. Almost there. We're getting so close. I got the windshield wiper reservoir in. It looks nice and professional and new. The next part to go in will be the headlights because on the bottom of them, they have these clips that hold the bumper in place. And then we'll put the bumper and then the grill and then the hood. So for the most part, the car is going back to stock. But when I was looking on eBay for headlights, I found that a stock headlight is around like 150 to 200 bucks for one. And these aftermarket really cool headlights were about 200 bucks for two. So check them out. Whish. That's the sound of fast things. We are hopefully going to get the bumper on. We're going to debump this bumper. We 
We also need to repair this because it's broken and only attached there. So we're going to reattach it here and reattach it there. All right, now the bumper is looking a lot more like a bumper, so we're gonna get it on the car. The bumper is on and it looks fantastic. Kind of looks like I have carbon fiber fenders. You know, that look of people having cars where they replace the front fenders. The only problem we're having is that on this side, I can't get it to like seat properly. And on this side in the corner as well, it's doing the same thing. I think though, as like the bumper sits on the car for a little bit longer, it might even out a little bit. It was sitting on a crashed car for you know months. So the plastic got a little warped. Now for the grill. So when we put the grill on and then we put the bumper on together, it kind of straightened this all out and made the bumper fit a thousand times better. So now it looks really good. I think the next thing we'll get that mirror on and then maybe put the hood on. So I've replaced a lot of mirrors and it, you know, it's something pretty common to get broken off of cars. I have never ever when replacing a mirror had to take more than just you know this corner piece off which is like a tiny speaker which goes here and then you can unbolt the mirror and then there's usually like a clasp you know to undo on the side but now subaru decided that once you undo the mirror that you will then look at this cord and say oh the clasp isn't here where where is that uh, electrical connection and then subaru you know they knew that you would then look over the corner and be like oh crap it's inside the door panel. I guess I have to take the entire door panel off too. What is that? What kind of engineering? They like, look how much crap they shoved in the engine bay. Why couldn't they just shove the power connector in here too? All right, door panel time. Oh, what? Master over here. I fished it out with some long tools. No need to take the door panel off. Frick you, Subaru. You This is how the coyote has been laying for the majority of this WRX build. There's been like metal shavings all over the ground and like every time I broom it up, it doesn't broom it up enough. So I don't want her getting it in her paws, which is why she's been very sad. Vanished to the house. Time for the finale. And I got this brand new hood for 70 bucks. Let me show you why. So this is a brand new hood. Uh, it's not OEM, it's from a different manufacturer. And I originally paid $138 for it. A few days after I purchased it off of eBay, the seller contacted me and told me that it had dents. And so they pulled it out of storage and they checked it before they gave it to me. And it had these like small, they're really tiny. And there's like five or six of them. And then there's a nick on the top here. So they offered me a 60 or $70 reduction and it ended up being about 70 bucks for a brand new hood. And I was more than happy to take that. I actually, with that 60 or 70 bucks that I saved, I got a dent removal kit and we will use that in another video to repair this hood. So we got the hood on and when it went down, we noticed that this side is like super tight and this side has a gap. 
So over here, it's actually tight enough that when it came down, it scratched the fender. We tugged and pulled at it for quite a while, but I think the brackets on both sides are bent. So we're gonna get new ones and then retry putting the hood on. All right, so I've been working on the hood and I looked up these hood hinges and they're about 40 bucks a piece. So I'm just trying to bend it out before I go and just throw money down and buy them. Before, what was happening is that this side, this corner was coming down and it was actually, if I push it down a little bit, you can see, it was scraping this metal a lot. And it actually, you know, took a couple pieces of paint out, which we'll have to fix later on. Um, and also when it went up, it dented this. So I have to fix that now too, which sucks. But in general, this side has a slight gap in it. Comes up here, it actually looks fine. But over here, it's very tight right here. It's not actually touching, but it is very tight. And it starts to go up fine, but then right here, it's lower. Like, it's lower than here. So my guess is that this hinge is pushed down, and that hinge is pushed up. And so it's kind of warping the hood like this and making this side come down. I think we're just gonna get the hood hinges because I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it aligned perfectly. But for now, we'll get the car in a running order because I need to get it registered. And I can't imagine that it wouldn't pass any sort of inspection with the hood not being aligned. So let's get some oil in it and get this thing started. And that's it for this episode. The WRX is looking pretty sick. It still needs a few things, but I can't wait to paint it. Besides being a daily driver, I'm not really sure what the plans are for this car. I've created a few renders of what some possibilities are for the future, which I'll show you right now. This one is a crazy wide body stance out one. And then this one is a lifted one, which just really catches my eye. If you guys don't follow me on other social medias, check me out. Same username, Brad Builds. I make renders too. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. We're most likely getting back to the Datsun in the next episode, so turn on those post notifications and don't miss out. I will catch you guys next time.